Welcome to Historical Stock Quotes with Stock History. My name's Jeff, I'm glad you're here. Let's just jump right in. Our goal is to allow the user to type in a ticker or, or company name into this input cell, uh, enter a start and end date, and we would like Excel to automatically retrieve the closing prices for all the dates, and then also display those in a chart. Okay, so can we do this? Sure, sure, and here's how. First, we're gonna convert this text value into a stock data type. The way that we do that is by selecting the input cell, going to data and stocks. And now as you can see, this change from the ticker symbol into this company name, and this is retrieving rich data about this company. And we can get a preview of it by clicking the icon, and we can see this, we can scroll down. We can also add additional columns uh, as desired with, to retrieve some related information. But for now, we've converted that text string into a stock data type. So the next thing that we're gonna do is use the stock history function to retrieve all of the closing prices. Okay, so the way that we do that is equals stock history. And this function has many options and many arguments. Uh, the first one that it needs is the stock, okay? And so we just point it to our input cell, which is B4. Comma, the next argument is the start date, which is here. Comma, the next argument is the end date, which is here. Comma, the next argument is the interval. Do we want daily, weekly, or monthly closing prices? In this case, I'll take daily, so I'll use zero and comma. And then the next argument is headers. Do we want headers, yes or no? In this case, I don't want any headers. Those are the, the column labels. So I'm gonna use zero, close the function. And now if it works, <laughs> let me go ahead and hit enter and yes, yes, we got it, okay? Uh, the stock history function retrieved the closing prices for all the closing dates between our start and end dates. And this is dynamic. So let's say we want to grab everything through um, January 10th, 2020. Okay, that's what it retrieves. We want to go through 630, 2020. That's what it retrieves. Yes. Okay, and so we get the idea. Uh, let me go ahead and set this back to 8 1 2020. And now what's cool is we can type in a ticker symbol. So let's try another ticker symbol. And that is done. Uh, let's try company name, and that is done. So pretty cool dynamic solution. Let me go ahead and change this back to Microsoft. There we go. Now, what if we want to display this in a chart? Well, we can just select any cell within our data range and go to insert, pick your chart type. I'm gonna go with a line chart, and now we've got that. And there's a couple of notes about making this dynamic. So if we just wanted to create this one chart for this set of data, we could easily just change the chart title manually and call it good. But if we wanted it to be more dynamic, then let's give this a dynamic chart title. The way that we do that is select the chart title, go to the formula bar, hit equals, and then just point it to this cell. We hit enter, and now we've got a dynamic chart title. So when we change this to um, Tesla, we're good. If we change this to Apple, then we're good, okay? Let's go ahead and go back to Microsoft, and we're good. Now, there's one other note about making this dynamic, okay? If we look at the data source range currently used by the chart, and we can do that by going here and here, we can see that it goes through row 156, right? And that is right here. So it's included or it's created the chart based on the current values. Okay, so the question becomes, what happens if there are more rows next time I wanna do an update? What if I wanna to go to September 1st, 2020, hit enter? Did that make it into the chart? No. If I select this and scroll down, I can see that those new rows are excluded. And if I go here and select data, I can see that it's still locked into 156. So to solve for that, we're gonna use some defined names. And the way that we do that, let me set this back by the way. The way that we do that is go to formulas, name manager, new. Now, I'm gonna set up a descriptive name and I'm gonna call this um, chart labels. And this name, and this name is gonna refer to the 
date column. So it's the first column within that spill range or within those uh, results uh, that are returned. So to do that, I'm going to use the index function. And I'm going to need to keep stock history, exclamation. And instead of pointing it to B7, I want to point it to the formula cell, the cell that has the stock history function. In our case, that is B10. And instead of referring to the single cell B10, I want to reference the entire results. That's called the spill range. So to do that, I'm going to use the spill reference operator, the pound or hash. And then I'm going to go with comma zero, which means all rows in that range. And then comma one, which means the first column within that range. Okay, so this name chart labels is going to refer to the first column within this spill range. So I click OK. And now I've got chart labels. And now I want to do something similar to retrieve the chart data. So I click new. I'm going to call my name chart data. It's going to be equal to, I'm going to wrap the index function around all of this. Instead of pointing to B7, I need it to point to the formula cell. That is B10. I need to include the spill reference operator. Zero for all rows, two for the second column, and OK. And now I've got chart data, chart labels, click close. And now I just need to update this chart source data. So I go to chart design, select data. So here for the legend entries, I click edit. And now I want to change this A1 style reference. Okay, that's locked into C10 to C156. I want to swap that out for my chart data. And note that we're going to need to keep this worksheet name and the exclamation point, worksheet name with the exclamation point. We're going to need to keep that in our formula. So we click OK. And now we're going to edit the axis labels as well. So edit. Again, I need to keep the worksheet name and the exclamation, but I'm just going to replace that A1 style range reference with our name, chart labels. And OK. Click OK. And now we should be good to go. So now if I change this to 9-1-2020 and hit Enter, those new values that yeah, looks like it works should be included. And if we scroll down, we can confirm, yes, those new rows are included. So pretty cool. Now we can go and say we want to grab um, this company through 630-20. Got it. Uh, maybe we want to go with this company through 9-1-2020 and got it. Okay, pretty cool. So um, anyway, I hope hopefully that helps. Uh, and um, yeah, thanks for joining me. Have a great day. This video is a production of Excel University. 